made it to the end of the program for today. Um, we have a few closing thoughts and a few administrative things, um, or tidy enough things. Um, at a very practical level, so I don't forget, um, just a reminder, please remember to take one of the CML bags with you. Um, the handouts for IMLS are in the back. And next to those is a box. If you don't plan to keep your name badge or lanyard for any practical purpose, if you could drop them off, we can reuse them in the future. Um, I realize people often take those home and just toss them, which isn't you know, really efficient. So um, just one thing I'd like to share as a how do we move forward thought. Um, well, you've heard over and over in the last two days that the, the drive to increase diversity, increase inclusion in LIS ed education is not new. In fact, about 45 years ago, when the University of Maryland's, uh, well, it wasn't the iSchool then, but College of Information Studies was, was a new thing, um, the faculty, staff, and students did something that was really, really creative and really daring. They um, built and ran a public library in a very, very high poverty area. This library was, in, in a number of years, it absorbed by the Prince George's library system, but while it was operating, the, the, the students were getting as direct as possible experience working with underserved populations. And as you've heard several of our speakers talk about, now we've got nothing as audacious as running our own library. But at Maryland, we do have quite a few programs that really do infuse diversity and inclusion throughout the college curriculum and the college environment. And in both these cases, be it the building the library or creating this new IDP master's program, both are an experiment. We're, we're very hopeful that the, the IDP program will have longer legs than the, the library experiment, but they are both experiments. And that's really what we need to be thinking about going forward. You know, having the, the desire, having the nerve to, to, to be brave enough to experiment educationally to come up with new approaches, new ways of trying to make diversity and inclusion something that all LIS students are well versed in before they graduate. Because if we don't evolve along with a rapidly changing society, in terms of demographics, in terms of age, in terms of immigration, in terms of many things, the real threat to the future of our field isn't in the things that people worry about. It's not ebooks, it's not mobile devices, it's not austerity, it's not the Ryan budget. <laughs> it would be becoming organizations that are ossified and irrelevant to most of the society they're there to serve. So every information professional, every information educator really needs to with a new program, a new course, a new service, a new anything, needs to, to really reflect on it and ask the question, will the members of your community, whoever they are, see themselves in this new program, this new course, this new service, this new resource? Because making available things that actually reach who we're serving is going to be a way to stay relevant in the face of whatever technological and social changes come along. And that, to be able to do that, our graduates have to be ready to do it. This, this event, many of you have already commented on, has been a wonderful way to get dialogue started and to get people sharing ideas. And you know, a lot of folks have already said, are you doing this next year? Um, it would be great. The answer is we don't know. Um, you could see future symposia like this being general, 
the kinds of you know broad topics we've talked about to get discussion moving, you could see doing two days on one specific thing, and there would you'd still have plenty more to cover. And we, we certainly want to do this. Um, this intersection of diversity, inclusion, information, and education is huge, and it's not going to get smaller. And we know from hearing from various people that there are all kinds of little pockets of a program here, a group there, a listserv somewhere else that really need a chance to get to communicate with each other a lot more and to bring in more research into talking about What's, you know, where are we getting ideas? Where are we getting the basis for these things? So we, as we as in the people behind this one, are certainly going to try to figure out how to do maybe every other year, something like that. Um, that's going to require us figuring out funding. Um, so if anyone has clever ideas or a large amount of money, <laughs> um, let me know. But. You will hear from us as we try to figure out how to do this again. So I want to close with circling back to where we started. I, we, we could not be doing this but for the sponsorship of the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the University of Maryland's Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Maryland's iSchool, and the Information Policy and Access Center. We also could not do it without 20 some odd wonderful speakers who shared their time and expertise, many of them traveling a very good distance, to be a part of this and to talk with the, what turned out to be about 170-ish people who registered for this. And finally, we really have to thank the volunteers, many of whom are huddled in the back corner now. Um, <laughs> Above all else, our conference coordinator, Rebecca Oxley. And finally, I want to thank everyone who attended. This is, in all seriousness, the fact that this many people had this much interest in this topic has to show us all how, not only how important it is, but how much people power we have to work from on this to really make a difference across our field. And it's, a, it's, it's on all of us to go ahead and continue this discussion, share ideas, take actions, learn from one another, experiment, be brave. So hopefully this will serve us well going forward. And hopefully we will be getting together again in not too distant future. So. That's it. Um, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the day, we rather impolitely will need to clean up. Um, on your way out, um, if you happen to need um, snacks, a few dozen bottled beverages, please take some to the road. And if you don't mind, we have garbage cans and recycling bins in back. If you want to drop some stuff on the way out, too, that would be fabulous. Thank you.